So now we're going to talk about uh, photorespiration. Okay, uh, you might be wondering, like, whoa, wait, what does that mean? What's the difference between respiration and the photorespiration? Okay, turns out it has to do with a psi reaction or unwanted reaction of Rubisco. Remember Rubisco? Okay, Rubis C and O. Okay, C and O. Rubisco is a carboxylase and an oxygenase, okay? So it can also react with oxygen, okay? Now, first thing first, okay? I must say, Rubisco is a horrible enzyme, okay? It sucks so bad, okay? It's a horrible enzyme. What does that mean, okay? If you look at the K-cat of uh, Rubisco, okay? The K-cat is about two per second. That means that you can catalyze two reactions per enzyme per second. Okay, it's not a very good enzyme. Right? It's relatively slow, right? but you can't blame it because it has to, you know, grab CO2, and you know, CO2 is very stable. So you have to really put some effort in this chemical reaction. So this enzyme is not very good. So um, there are a lot of people um, in the scientific community that try to engineer Rubisco, okay, and see if we can make Rubisco better, faster. If you can do that you solved a lot of problems. For example, if you can engineer Rubisco so that it reacts very fast, maybe your trees can grow 10 times faster. Um, so maybe, hey, don't underestimate this, the, this okay? Because um, trees growing faster, this means agriculture, right? Agriculture. Because uh, you guys should uh, appreciate the difficulty, uh, or at least recognize the difficulty that human society is facing in this century, okay? This century, it's going to be um, difficult in what? Do you guys know? Energy and resource, okay? So resource is going to be the number one challenge for human society in this century, okay? Because human population is increasing. Now, resource in terms of water and food, okay? Agriculture, right? So uh, if you don't have proper amount of agriculture, uh, you cannot feed so many people. If you can't feed People, guess what people will do? Huh? Star war. Yeah. So people are trying to take other people's food. Agriculture is very important. If you don't have agriculture, you don't have food. If you don't have food supply, you will stimulate conflict and war. You will start to increase the resources. So don't underestimate the scientific improvement. So what do you think about medicine? Everything is fine. 人本来就会挂掉，所以没有关系。但是如果你没有 food， OK， 没有 food， 那大家真的会 hold 不住， OK， 所以真的会很严重。So a lot of people are trying to um engineer Rubisco or somehow make plants grow faster, uh, more resistant to like short supply of water, that kind of stuff. So um Rubisco is a very uh, important topic, right? And um. But for our purpose, you know, since we're, we're just discussing the, the science behind it, we should understand that Rubisco, because it's both an oxygenase as well as carboxylase. So carboxylase, we know that it reacts with CO2. Oxygenase means that it reacts with CO. So basically, oxygenase means that it can incorporate CO into your product or into your substrate. Okay, so in the oxygenase reaction, the indiolate intermediate, instead of doing a nucleophilic attack on the CO2, what you will do is it attacks O2, okay, right here. And as a result, what you will generate is a one, two, three, four, five carbon intermediate. So normally you would have gotten a six carbon product and then it's split into three carbon and two of those. But now what you get is a five carbon intermediate. And then of course you still split using water. You will get, okay, so the bottom, this guy is still G3P. 
I mean 3PG, sorry. It, the bottom is still 3PG, okay, so that's fine. But the top part, okay, so this part, okay, what you'll get is a 2-phosphoglycolate. Okay, so it doesn't look like 3PG, right? It, it, it's not 3PG, it's 2-phosphoglycolate, it's glycolate. So the problem now being you produced a product that you don't know what to do with, okay? Instead of a 3PG that you can use to make G3P, glucosaldehyde 3-phosphate, now you get 2PG and, sorry, not 2PG, but it's like a 2-phosphoglycerol, right? This is 2-phosphoglycerate. Not the same thing, oh. Glycerate, 2PG is in the goal. Sangatan. This is a 2PG, okay? So, so not, 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 not this, okay? Not this. Okay. 2-phosphoglycolate, it's, it's 2-carbon. So it still has an acid, um, carbon, immediately phosphate. So it's, it's, missing, it's missing this part, okay? So it, it, different things, okay, different things. So 2-phosphoglycolate, not 2-phosphoglycerate. If it's 2-phosphoglycerate, you can do stuff with it, but 2-phosphoglycolate, it's a two-carbon intermediate that you cannot do anything with it, okay? All right, so 2 phosphoglycolate Glycolate is a two-carbon metabolite. So far, so far, in our class, how many two-carbon metabolites have we talked about? Or just throw me some names. Cisicosoacetylcholate and one other thing. So far, we talked about two carbons. Acetylcholate and... Glycolysis 里面只有 six carbon 跟 three carbon 的, 不在glycolysis里面, 然后也不在PPP里面, PPP里面是有 三个碳, 四个碳, 五个碳, 六个碳, 跟七个碳, 但是没有两个碳的, OK? TCA cycle里面呢, glycolysis, 原说 glycolysis, OK? Glyoxalate, 两个碳的, OK? 所以是在TCA cycle里面的那个glycolysis, So so far, we only talked about two, two carbon, Intermediate, acetyl-CoA and glyoxalate, okay? So if we want to metabolize this 2-phosphoglycolate, what do you think? Where would it go? Does it go to, does it go to acetyl-CoA or does it go to glyoxalate, okay? So it turns out it's going to go to glyoxalate and that is because the structure of glycolate is more similar to glyoxalate in fact, all you have to do is an oxidation. You can turn glycolate into glyoxalate. Okay, so let me show you right here. So this is what I'm talking about, okay? You go from glycolate, this is glycolate, and all you have to do is you oxidize it, and you can turn Obviously, acid you cannot oxidize anymore, so what can you oxidize is this. This is glyoxalate, this is glycolate, right? You should know. Okay, so 2-phosphoglycolate, okay, in the chloroplast, if all of a sudden, okay, your rubisco decides to grab a O2 instead of CO2, then you generate phosphoglycolate. So your, your Kelvin cycle cannot use 2-phosphoglycolate, so then what do you do, okay? So the 2-phosphoglycolate gets dephosphorylated, and it becomes glycolate, and it, it is spit into the peroxisome, okay? So for peroxisome has a lot of oxidative um, functions, so it, it usually oxidizes stuff. And where you'll take another O2, okay, to react with glycolate to generate glyoxalate. Glycolate and the glyoxalate, okay? Right? So once you get to glyoxalate, you will think, oh wait, why can't you just use glyoxalate shunt, right? But turns out you can't, right? You can, but uh, well, photorespiration is gonna use another pathway where you can turn glyoxalate into glycine, okay? Basically, it's going to do a transamination. And of course, there's another H, right? 
you can do a transamination using, oh, I don't know, glutamate and alpha KG, for example, something like that, okay? Minor detail. This is glycine, okay? You go to glycine, and glycine can be converted into serine. Don't worry about this. Just know that this process exists. We'll talk about the detail of this when we talk about amino acid synthesis, okay? But serine is actually synthesized from glycine, okay? So you go from glycolate to glycolate to serine, and then serine can then become this thing called hydroxypyruvate, okay? Why? Because if you look at the structure of serine and you look at the structure of pyruvate, the only thing different is then, again, you have a amino group do a transamination. It becomes a keto group, okay? So now you should know amino group and the keto group, they can sort of switch, okay? They can swap. And then you have hydroxypyruvate. This is hydroxypyruvate. And then you can reduce that into glycerate, okay? Glycerate. And then glycerate can be activated using glycerate kinase to 3PG, okay? I, I think I told you guys this. Glycerol, alcohol, glyceraldehyde, right? And then glycerate or glyceric acid, right? I think I, I, I told you guys this, okay? So glycerate can then become 3-phosphoglycerate, and of course 3-phospho happens right here, okay? And then 3-phosphoglycerate can then go back into the um, Kelvin cycle or the central metabolism, and then you can do whatever that you have to do, okay? So three, once you get back to glycerate, you can then convert it into 3PG, and 3PG can become G3P. Okay, my bottom line is that what you should notice is if the Rubisco uses, CO, uh, uses O2 instead of CO2, then the cell actually has to spend extra energy to metabolize this byproduct. Where's the extra energy? For example, you have to use NADH right here, NADH. You have to use ATP, for example. So instead of instead of using this 2PG, you're actually burning extra stuff, okay? And also check this out, 2PG, right? 2 carbon, 2 carbon, 2 carbon, 2 carbon. To glycine, still 2 carbon. However, going from glycine to serine, have you noticed something really strange? 2 carbon becomes 3 carbon and kick out CO2. Have you noticed that? Glycine, 2 carbon. Serine is three carbons, okay? Now it's a bit high CO2, okay? What, what happened? It's using two glycines, okay? So it's actually, this, this part runs twice, okay? So not only do you not fix CO2, okay? You lose carbon, okay? You not only is not fixing CO2 using Rubisco, you're actually losing carbon. This is why it's called photorespiration, okay? Two things, respiration. Usually when we say respiration, meaning right? respiration, it has to do O2. So it usually means O2 is too high, okay? So you have O2 coming in, okay? O2 and O2, that's respiration. And also you are doing CO2 production, okay? So that's what res respire. You're breathing O2, you spit out CO2, okay? This is exactly what this process does, okay? So this is a side reaction of photosynthesis. It's an unwanted reaction. So this will hurt your overall photosynthetic efficiency, right? Because you have to spend extra energy to get rid of the byproduct, and then you're actually losing carbon. So it's not a good thing, right? So instead of fixing one, you actually spit out one. Right? So that's not a good idea. So photorespiration, anyone want to take a guess? Usually occurs under what condition? condition很容易会有photorespiration? CO2. CO2不够的时候, okay? Yeah, CO2不够的时候,你就没有CO2来做Calvin cycle,来做Rubisco. CO2很低, 所以你的Rubisco就会,不行啊,我要吃东西啊,我要找个东西react,那它就会去找O2, okay? 那什么样子的情况下,很容易出现CO2不够,然后O2很多? 
可能光很强的时候 ，maybe you will have this photorespiration going on。反正光很强，你你的 light reaction 会一直制造 O2， 但是你把 CO2 都吃掉，然后你就会开始一堆 O2， 然后 less CO2。OK。但是你们还是要知道，呃 ，Rubisco 这个 enzyme primarily 它还是一个 carboxylase。How do I know that? OK， 它对 CO2 的 affinity 还是比对 O2 其实高很多啦。为什么？因为空气里面 CO2 几 percent？ 哎、okay, ，我们说那个什么四百 ppm 有没有 ？ppm 一个 ppm 是呃 parts per million 嘛，一个 ppm 的话就是百万百万分之一，所以是十的负六嘛。所以说四百 ppm 的话是。四乘上十的负四，对，所以是零点零四 percent 的 CO2 浓度。OK， so CO2 的浓度其实不是很高嘛，零点零四而已，所以蛮低的。对，但是 oxygen 的浓度在一般的空气里面是二十 percent。Right， so yeah， we still have plants growing， so that means that Rubisco actually it, it does prefer CO2。OK， it doesn't really prefer O2， but it's just that you know you still have a you still have a possibility of Even lower amount of CO2, and then you get a bunch of、um, O2, and then you will react with O2. All right. So, all right. Since we have this problem, nature has to come up with a solution. So, what's the solution? Okay. C4 plant. Maybe back then you're like, I don't care what C4 plant is. But now we're studying photosynthesis, so you should understand why C4 plant is good. Okay. C4 plant does not have That much of photorespiration. Okay, why is that? Because we know that photorespiration occurs when the oxygen content or oxygen level is high. So turns out through evolution, you got these plants called C4 plants. And what C4 plants do is that they will actually have two layers in their structure. So if you look at this particular graph, so here outside is air, and on the top layer you have those mesophile. Cells like this layer, okay, and then inside you have these bundle sheath cells. So you have two layers of cells, okay, and basically what happens is air, the o CO two from the air will come into the mesophyll cells, okay, and instead of using Rubisco and you know all that business to do、uh, CO two fixation right away, what C four plant will do is it's going to react. CO2 with PEP using PEP carboxylase, and you produce oxaloacetate. Okay, oxaloacetate. Of course, remember, guys. Remember, oxaloacetate is not a very stable product, right? Because it can. It's a beta keto acid, so it naturally、um, can degrade to pyruvate. So very quickly, your oxaloacetate has to become malate. Okay, you reduce it. Using NADPH, you turn it into malate. Malate is now stable. It's a stable organic acid, and then you can sort of transport using a transporter, transport malate to the bundle sheath cell. Okay, so in the bottom layer. Okay, so the layer that's not exposed to air. Right, and then malate in this particular type of cell. Can then do the. Do you guys remember what this enzyme is? Malate become pyruvate, and then produce NADPH. Malic enzyme, 不是是不是是 malic enzyme. This guy is malic enzyme. Okay, malic enzyme. I don't know why it's called malic enzyme, but it's malic enzyme. All right, malic enzyme, and then you produce pyruvate plus NADPH, and then guess what? Pyruvate can go back. Okay, pyruvate goes back. Okay, pyruvate goes back, and then pyruvate can become PP again. PP can then do this whole thing again. Okay, and once you go from malate to pyruvate down here, okay, down here, and you will release CO2. Okay, so the CO2 can be used for Calvin cycle. Okay. The reason why these things are called C4 plant is because of malate and oxaloacetate. These guys are C4, four carbons. So basically, these plants have evolved a function where 
you can sort of protect the Rubisco containing cell, so these cells, this bottom cell, okay, from O2 penetration, okay, because you have these uh, leaves, and okay? it takes a longer time for CO2 and O2 to penetrate one cell, another cell, okay, so you, you can actually imagine this process where O2 in here is not going to be as high, okay, that's one thing, and then you can concentrate CO2. How do you concentrate CO2? Because all of the reactions on top will grab CO2, okay, it grabs CO2, and then it transports CO2 through malate, right, you use malate to transport the CO2 down into this cell, you dump the CO2 out, so you dump a bunch of CO2 out, malate goes back, or pyruvate goes back, and then continue. So it's sort of, you can think of malate and pyruvate as a little truck, okay? It's a truck that carries CO2 into the cell, okay? So this is the C4 plant. So, so malate is used as a shuttle to transport CO2 into the bundle sheet cells, thereby increasing the CO2 concentration here, okay? So it's a mechanism in which you concentrate CO2 concentration, right? You increase the CO2 concentration, okay? And this is C4 plants. However, right off, however, okay? think about one thing. Let's say here this mechanism tries to increase CO2 concentration in this cell relative to the atmospheric CO2. So, you know, let's say that concentration of CO2 here is higher than air, okay? How do you do that? Right, how do you do that? E Energy-wise, thermodynamically-wise, it doesn't make sense, okay? It doesn't make sense because you go from a low concentration to a high concentration, you've got to put some energy in, right? Okay, and in this case, it's using ATP. Okay? So essentially, you're using ATP to drive this pushing action. Okay, you're using ATP to push CO2 into a smaller space and increase the concentration. Because otherwise, how can you do that? Okay, so we, even though we're in, in talking biology or biochemistry, you still have to think about these things if they make sense. Because all things are subject to the laws of physics. So if you today take something from low temperature to high temperature, okay, to a place, then you gotta put in energy, right? 不然的话,这个不是一个 thermodynamically possible 的一件事情, okay? Right, so you're using energy for every CO2 fixed, right? Okay, so let's take a look at photo energy in photosynthesis, okay? This is, this is a review paper that I got in 2008, okay? So this review paper so, sort of is doing a calculation on energy translation efficiency, okay, conversion efficiency from solar energy to biomass energy, okay, because why do we care, you know, why, why, why do you not care, okay. so um, it's important. So let's say I start with 1,000 kilojoules of energy from the sun, okay, that's how much energy that I'm shooting at the surface of the earth, okay. Turns out half of it you can't even touch, okay, you can't touch that, okay, you can't touch that. Why? These are outside of photosynthetic active spectrums, meaning probably IR and some UV. You can't use it. You just cannot use it. Okay? So half of it you can't even use. So sucks for plants, okay? Then then you wonder like how come they don't evolve a mechanism to do that? Yeah. Right? So about 51.3% is just lost, okay? And then you have about 5% that's reflected and transmitted, okay? Because you're going into a medium. We, you, you guys took physics, okay? Like optics, right? You have a wave, light wave. A certain portion gets reflected, okay? And a certain portion gets transmitted, okay? So that's just how it is. So you also have some energy lost right there, okay? And you also have about 6.6% .6 of photochemical inefficiency. What does that mean? That means that Photochemicals are these antenna molecules that absorb light. Who says that when you absorb light, the efficiency is 100%? Like the resonance transfer, who says that it's 100% efficient? Maybe not 100% efficient. 
Okay? So you will have some inefficiency from the photochemicals. Right? So by the time you go through using light, you're left with 37.2% of energy okay, that you get from the sun. And then you separate them into C3 and C4. Okay? Now you have carbohydrate synthesis, okay? and you lose a bunch of energy right here. Why? Carbohydrate synthesis, why do you lose energy? Lose energy is what the meaning is. It's that you the product, you the product, you respiration。就这么convenient的还给我了。一个glucose，记得是超过几个ATP。三十几个，哎，对，差不多三十，三十到三十二个，三十到三十四个。但average三十二个。但是记不记得我好像某一个lecture我有说啊？ 如果我今天把glucose完整的氧化吐出来的能量应该要可以给我做大概50还是60个ATP对不对 但是实际上就变成说我从glucose的能量到32个ATP的能量中间我得到我有一个energy lost 然后我的32个ATP可能只有 I don't know 几百 我, 我忘了 okay, 几百个KJ per mol 那中间的那个能量 lost 去哪了 记不记得 我说, 我特别, 我特别的强调说, 诶, 为什么会这样? 对, 为什么我们的, 我们的这个cellular process 我们在做ATP的时候 我为什么不就做50个ATP 我要只做30个ATP 因为如果做50的话 会怎么样 会死掉, 会死掉。<笑> 然后他就死掉 <笑> 是吗 就我做了50个ATP 然后他就死掉 就消失了 对,它就达到equilibrium 那如果是equilibrium的话,它就没有driving force 嘛 所以我们,那为什么equilibrium 就是说我们在做这些能量的做这些reaction的时候 conversion 本来就不太可能 100% efficient 因为如果说 100% efficient 的话 那它可能不见得会是一个很有就是很能够发生的一个反应 OK So carbohydrate synthesis same thing right same thing You need to have your reactions delta G less than zero right You need to produce ATP right In All of that comes into these energy lost OK that's, that's just how it is In order to do uh, chemistry you know you have to sacrifice a little bit of energy. So that's carbohydrate synthesis. Right? And then we compare C3 and C4. We see that there's a difference in terms of photorespiration, where C4 is nearly zero, and C3 you got about 6% lost. Of course, this is uh, assuming our current um, CO2 concentration. Okay? And then at the very end, you have respiration. Okay? Because you know, ultimately, you will still have some respiration going on. Okay, but respiration is minimal, it's about 2% or so for both C3 and C4. So at the very, very end, at the very, very end, you go from about 1,000 kilojoules of energy from the sun and go down to biomass, you get about 5 to 6%. Okay, so plants are not a very good converter for photo energy. Okay, just they're not, they're not. Okay, do you guys know? Solar cells, 太阳能, 太阳能板, 现在大概的efficiency是多少? 你们有没有知道? Okay. Research阶段的 photo, 就是这种做太阳能的 conversion, 可以做到大概 40, 40多%, 
很高，但是真正在被 manufacture 的不不是那个嘛 ？OK， 现在大部分一般人使用的这个 for 这种这种太阳能板啊。大概是二十 percent 左右，十五到二十 percent 的的 energy conversion， 就是光能变电能，大概十五到二十 percent。OK， 那植物六趴、五趴 ，OK， 那还这还算是已经好的嘞，这已经是很好的估算。呃，很多当然看什么种植物嘛，有些植物长得比较好，有些植物长得不好。On average， 我们说呃，地面上的植物大概是在一到三 percent 的 energy efficiency。OK， 然后如果你是看绿藻 （algae）、cyanobacteria， 它们可以高到大概七到九 percent。OK， 但是跟太阳能板其实比起来，还是有一定的落差。那为什么生物大家还是在思考说用生物来做能源？因为它可以自己长。OK， 因为它可以自己 reproduce， 它不需要靠 manufacture， 它不用靠什么 manufacture， 它可以自己 grow。哎，那它 grow at ambient temperature， 所以。它还是有呃一定的 advantage 在里面 ，OK? So, uh, but you have to understand that biological conversion efficiency is not very high, OK? Um, relatively speaking, but it's maybe cheaper, right? Because you know you grow plants, you just grow it, it's free as long as you have land. Taiwan 没有 land 了 ，OK? 但是如果你今天是在 like 呃那种大陆型国家的话，他们其实有很多地可以用，虽然很多地方不能种东西啦。但是你可能可以 consider 养一些那种藻类的养殖 ，OK？ Alright, so if we look at the difference, or at least the energy conversion efficiency, OK, as a function of temperature, and we look at C4, C3 at different CO2 concentration in the atmosphere, and what you notice is that as temperature increases. The energy conversion efficiency decreases for C3 plants. Okay, now for C4 plants, it's pretty much constant regardless of where you are. Okay, regardless of what kind of temperature the plant is in. Okay, now normally speaking, you know our room temperature or the atmospheric temperature is typically around, let's say, this region. Okay, and what you notice is that. For most cases, C4 plants have a higher efficiency than C3 because currently our atmospheric CO2 concentration is how much? Do you guys know? About 400. Exactly. So it's about 400. So roughly, we're going to look at this this particular line, right? So roughly speaking, so if we look at the temperature range between, let's say, 15 degrees to 30 degrees. And what we'll notice is that here your C4 is more uh, efficient than your C3. Okay, except when you go to lower temperature, where your C3 can actually have a higher effect. Now, what you notice from this chart is that as the CO2 concentration increases in the atmosphere, gradually the the advantage of C3 will become higher than C4. Okay, and this is you know one one of the things that the scientists are joking around and say you know because right now we have a increase in CO two due to human activities. Eventually, C four will no longer have any advantage over C three. Okay, right now it still does, but you know if you go to like uh, if you go to seven hundred ppm of CO two in the atmosphere, C three plants at about thirty degree and below. Is better than C4. Okay, so、um, obviously you should be able to understand why C3 plant efficiency will be higher when the CO2 concentration increases, right? Because Rubisco、uh, can grab CO2, and then in that case you don't need to spend the extra energy necessary to move CO2 from the top layer to the bottom layer. Make sense, right? If the atmospheric CO2 is high enough. You don't have to do this, okay? Then actually, that will increase your energy efficiency. All right. So we talked about plants.、Uh, plants you can do C4 plant, and that is a way to concentrate CO2. How about cyanobacteria? Okay, cyanobacteria again is a、uh, prokaryotic microorganism. It's a bacteria. So bacteria does not have chloroplasts, right? It's only one. 
like a like a little box, okay, like a little plastic bag and with a bunch of enzyme in it. Okay? So in those cases, how does or how do cyanobacteria deal with photorespiration? Okay? Turns out, okay, it turns out cyanobacteria, what they do is that they can actually produce this protein cage called the carboxysome. Carboxysome if the shape looks like looks looks like this, okay? The shape looks like that. And in a way, it's kind of similar to a viral capsule, okay? Um, carboxysome is a little cage made out of proteins, okay? Just like your viral capsid. Viral capsid is a protein cage, right? So it's very similar to that. Now, in a cyanobacteria, let, let's look at figure B. In a cyanobacteria, what you have is that this is the cell membrane, right? And you can have CO2 diffuse in, or you can have bicarbonate coming in through a transporter. Okay. Now, what the carboxysome does is it sort of blocks um, gas diffusion, sort of. It, it at least slows down gas diffusion. So what happens is that you have to have a transporter here that can bring in that bicarbonate in. Okay. So bicarbonate can penetrate, whereas uh, CO2O2, uh, they don't come in as efficient. And then once your bicarbonate is in Rubisco, what you can then do is use carbonic anhydrase. Did we talk about carbonic anhydrase back in Biochem 1? It's one of the most efficient enzymes. Okay? It has the highest uh, KCAT over KM. Do you guys remember KCAT over KM is called what? There's a term for it. KCAT to KM. KM is a Enzyme kinetics, if you are not aware of it, it will be very difficult. Because you are bio-related major enzyme kinetics. At least KM and KCAT can describe what they mean. What is it? Do you remember KM? KCAT? KCAT is a small K, and then there is something KM is a big K. 记不记得有没有看过这个东西？有吧，好嘛吼，好来，麻烦 KM 有没有知道 KM？KM KM 跟什么比较有关系？哎、right, ，Enzyme Kinetics， OK， Enzyme Kinetics。我们通常讲 Enzyme Kinetics 的时候，我们要看的是什么？我们就是我们要我们要说的是一个什么样子的 graph？ 来、right, ，我们说 ray， 对不对？通常我们说 Kinetics 嘛，对不对？它的它的。How fast it occurs? Ray as a function of what? 一般我们说，我们看一个化学反应。那如果我要看 ray 的话 ，ray usually 是一个 function of substrate concentration, right? Right, substrate concentration, right? 那呃，一般的 chemical reaction 可能就是一个直线，然后一直往上跑，对不对？一般的化学反应。那 enzyme 的反应的话 ，OK， 它不是直线 ，OK， 前面是直的，哎，前面是直的，然后接下来呢会平掉，有没有？记得记得这个 curve 嘛，对不对？然后我们说最快的速度，这边呢我们叫它 v max， 喂，记得吗 ？OK， 那为什么会有一个 v max 呢？它的它的呃物理上的原因是什么？它它的原因是什么？为什么你会烧水加到一个 level 以后，你的 maximum velocity 就不会再快了？酵素不够了 ，OK， 酵素不够，因为你可以想象说，如果你在这个反应器里面，你一开始你整个整个 reaction 你就只放十个 enzyme， 十个 enzyme 哦，然后原本呢你是一个烧水。一个烧水变两个烧水，哎、欸、，enzyme 都还够用，所以如果你从一个烧水变成两个烧水，当然它的 conversion 速度会变快，对不对？那但是你当你的 conversion 变成十一个烧水的时候，那就有一个烧水碰不到 enzyme， 哎、欸，所以那不管你再怎么 increase 你的烧水的浓度 ，OK， 它最快最快的速度就是那十个 enzyme 在做催化 ，right？ 所以这是 v max，OK，、okay? 那 km 呢？ KM 是什么 ？Mercier-Menten equation，V 嘛，对不对
So 这个这个东西叫 ray。V 等于 V max times substrate concentration divided by substrate concentration plus Km. Okay, this thing is called the Maclise Menten equation. Right? 有有没有看过这个？有啦。哎，这个真的很重要，这好不好？这这是跟那什么？呃呃，一个 K Dalton 是什么东西？有没有？是是一样一样 level 的，一样 level 的东西。哎，所以我们说 velocity of 一个 reaction， 它是等于 maximum velocity， 然后 times substrate concentration 除上呃 substrate concentration plus Km。OK， 那 Km 呢，它就有一个 special 的意义，就是当你当你如果 substrate 浓度等于 Km 的时候。OK， 那你的 V 呢，就会等于你的 V max km 除上，这个如果也是 km 嘛，就变成两个 km， 对不对？然后 km 可以 cancel， 所以就等于 V max 除二，也就是说 km 呢，就是当你 V max 除以二，差不多这里 one half V max 的时候。这个地方就叫 km， OK， 所以 km 是越高越好还是越小越好？对一个 enzyme 的效率来说，越小越好，因为你只要有一点点 substrate， 它就可以达到它一半的 maximum velocity。所以你只要有一点点 substrate， 这个 enzyme 就其实已经非常非常快速的去做反应。来，所以这是 km 跟 kk， 那 kk 是什么东西？ K c a t 其实它的 definition 就很简单，它是 V max maximum velocity， 它就等于 enzyme 的 total 全部你放进去多少的 enzyme 乘上 K c a t OK， 所以 V max 跟 K c a t 它是 directly proportional， right？ 所以就你可以把 V max 跟 K c a t 想差不多。那 K c a t 意思就是说，这条线往上还是往下？ OK， 就是这条平下来的线是往上还是往下 ？OK， 所以 K c a t defines 这个 enzyme 的 absolute 的速度，我感觉说它是一个很厉害的 enzyme， 它跑很快。Km 呢，其实主要在看的是这个 enzyme 吃你杀水的效果 ，affinity 好不好 ？OK， 如果它的效果很好，所以你只要一点点杀水，这个 enzyme 马上转换它。OK， 然后记不记得我们之前不是有讨论到那个？ c h y m o t r y p s i n 有吧 c h y m o t r y p s i n 还记得吗？记得哈 c h y m o t r y p s i n 就就点头，然后 smile， 然后 smile and nod。哎 c h y m o t r y p s i n 它吃的 substrate 是什么？一个蛋白，然后它是要切哪里？哎 p h e n o l a l 很好嘛 p h e n o l a l i n e tryptophan 这种大型的 bulky 的呃 amino acid residue， right？ 然后我们不是有看到说那。这个 chymotrypsin 它对 glycine 的 activity 不是就很差吗？对，那为什么很差？就是它的 Km 会变非常非常高，有没有？那 Km 一高，那它的催化效率也会降低，所以我们最后会看一个东西叫做 catalytic efficiency， 有没有 ？catalytic efficiency。And what this is 是那个，因为我们说 K c a t 越高越好，对不对 ？K c a t 越高 ，N 站活性越高。那 Km 越低越好，因为你 Km 越低的话，代表这个 enzyme 只要一点点烧水，它就可以去 react。所以我们通常会看 catalytic efficiency， OK， 就是说你这个 enzyme 吃这个特定的烧水，它的 efficiency 多好， OK。那如果这个 number K k 越高， Km 越低，除出来那个 number 会越大。那这个 number 越大，代表这个 enzyme 的效率越好， OK。所以我们是这样子 define。那 in this case， carbonic anhydrase has a very very high catalytic efficiency。Because it's very, very efficient, very, very fast. Okay, and where do you get carbonic anhydrase? It's in your blood. Right, it facilitates the transfer of bicarbonate to CO2. Okay, so it facilitates the conversion of、uh, bicarbonate to、uh, to CO2. Okay, so that's really what I want to get at. Right, so it does this reversible reaction of bicarbonate to CO2, and it's a very, very efficient enzyme. Right, so guys, make sure you understand 
Mercury's Benton equation、um, because you can be expected that 那个你如果要去念研究所啊或者什么的，那这个东西要听过、哦，应该要至少你可以跟人家讲说啊 ，KM 大概是干嘛 ，KV Max 到底是干嘛，就大概抓得出那个 idea 就好。你不见得一定要完整的记住 Mercury's Benton equation 是长那样。但是你至少要知道 curve 长这样，跟 K M K cat 是拿来干嘛的？哎，这这个是还蛮 valuable。Okay, now, so cyanide bacteria can do this. Uh, inside the cage, it has a bicarbonate to C O two reaction, and then therefore you can actually increase the C O two concentration inside of the、um, carboxy zone pretty high. Okay, and then inside the carboxy zone, what you notice on the figure on the left, right here, the figure on the left. What you see is that it's basically filled, packed with all these、uh, Rubisco enzymes. Okay, so in the carboxyzone, you have two types of enzyme. One is carbonic anhydrase, and the other one is essentially Rubisco. Okay, and you have tons of Rubisco. Okay, so estimate carbonic anhydrase about 100 copies of carbonic anhydrase, but then you have about 2,000 copies of the Rubisco. Protein, okay. So CBBL and CBBS, right? So you have a bunch of these. If you take a、uh, electron micrograph of the cyanobacteria, and you can actually see carboxyzone, okay. So what you can see is that you have these little blob, okay, this regular structured blob, okay. So those are the carboxyzone. Uh, the diameter for carboxyzone is about like a hundred nanometers. Okay, of course, different、uh, cyanobacteria have a slightly different size carboxyzone. But you know, roughly speaking, this is a micro compartment. Okay, bacterial micro compartment that's made out of proteins. Oh, 我我反问我一个同学啊，他他 U C L S 的时候，他在研究的就是他们老师是做这种 bacterial compartment 的 expert. Okay, 那他们就在研究说 ，OK， 天然界里面有一堆这种 protein 的。Cage, okay, 像是 virus 的那个 shell， 或者是像 carboxy 这种这种东西，然后就可以去去设计。你看，假如说我今天想要设计一个蛋白，那我要怎么样子知道说蛋白可以组成一个 cage？ OK， 他们可以用电脑去计算，计算出我今天表达就是自己设计一段蛋白，那蛋白的序列我可以自己 design。那这个蛋白一旦出来以后，它要自己可以 assemble 成一颗球。哎，那那个怎么 assemble？ 哎，所以那是。还蛮 big deal 的，因为你可以，如果你可以做出这种球啊，你就代表说你可以在 bacteria 或者是生物体里面，你可以做出 spatial 的 separation。OK， 那 spatial separation 为什么很重要？因为对于催化反应来说，你要是可以把东西分开，有没有？在空间上的分开，你就可以达到一些浓度特定浓度的的 difference 这样。OK， 所以它会对于呃我们在生产那种呃生物的一些 compound 来说是蛮有帮助的 ，OK， 所以，嗯，他我那个朋友他那时候做那个 study 发了一篇 science 的 paper on 怎么样子去设计呃 proteins， 然后去盖一个 cage，OK、okay?。All、right. So, any questions on carboxyzone? All right. So, carboxyzone is essentially a protein. Um, it's a protein that can assemble. OK. So, if you look at the Carboxyzone protein. There are a bunch of proteins right here. So they're associated proteins, and they're the shell proteins. So they make make up the entire cage. Okay, so they're made up of individual proteins. 呃，不是一一个大 protein 哦，它这不是一个不是一个 single polypeptide， 然后出来就一坨 pro 一个 cage， 不是这样。它是一块一块的，有没有？有点像是你去拼一个那种三 D 的。那拼图有没有？三 D 拼图一个球状的，你就这样叠出来，你就叠出一颗球来。OK， we're good. All right, so that concludes photosynthesis. All right, so you should be familiar with light reaction and the dark reaction.